Welcome to the Rubric Advantage Lightboard series. My name is Rebecca Fitzhugh, and today we're going to be discussing end-to-end -end security. When I first began my career, it's a little bit unusual, uh, but I began my career in the United States Marine Corps, and a big part of my job was cryptography. So it's been important to me since the very beginning that every solution that I've ever architected be as secure as possible. Rubric Cloud Data Management provides end-to-end -end security from your cradle to the grave. So as an example, at ingest, all of the data is encrypted, regardless of whether it is a physical server, a virtual machine, or application specific like an Oracle or SQL database. Should you choose to replicate your data from, for example, a production site to a DR site, you may absolutely use rubric to replicate from cluster to cluster. And all of that communication between and replication data between is encrypted. Additionally, when it comes to enter and enter node communication between the nodes that make up your rubric cluster, all of that communication is encrypted as well. So regardless, at this point, when you look at it, whether that data is at rest or in flight, or whether this is just simply nodes communicating between each other or to each other, that data and that communication is encrypted. Now, once we start moving that data off of your rubric cluster, we do encrypt that as well. So should you choose to archive to the public cloud like AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud Platform, that's encrypted in flight, and that data is encrypted once it resides in the public cloud. Same thing goes if you're using on-premises storage for long-term retention, regardless of where, whether it's object store, NFS, or tape. And if worst case scenario happens and you have to do an image level or file level recovery and restore that data back to any of your, our data sources, that's encrypted as well. Should you choose, you have the ability to integrate with an external key management system as well and specify when those keys will be rotated. But is encryption enough? How do we protect ourselves from ourselves? So, if we combine concepts like multi-tenancy and role-based access control, we have the ability to create really effective security zones. So as an example, within Rubric, I can create organization A, and I can also create organization B. Now, within those organizations, I'm able to specify different workload types, as well as different clusters within those workload types. So for example, within my, um, Tenant A, I have the ability to specify only vSphere VMs and nothing else. And the same thing goes for tenant number B or organization B, I can specify that this is going to be SQL databases. And I can specify exactly what instances and databases are going to be a part of this particular tenant. Now, where does this, this becomes more powerful whenever I combine this with role-based access control. So I could, for example, create a user account and specify that it's going to have privileges to only do things like file level recovery, live mount, and then of course just view. And now I'm going to assign that to a SQL administrator. Now when I pair these privileges with this particular tenant, I get a really nice security zone. So Whenever you combine our multi-tenancy and the ability to create organizations within Rubric with role-based access control, you can get very granular. So in this example, we have a SQL administrator who has privileges to only do these three things. And when that SQL administrator logs into Rubric, he or she only sees these exact data sources. Nothing more, nothing less. That's pretty powerful. Security is an important aspect of any design and Rubric takes security very seriously. To learn more, please visit rubric.com and look at the resources available.